On Thursday, 27 September 1883, Duthie Park in Aberdeen was formally opened to the public. It was opened by Princess Beatrice, daughter of Queen Victoria, who happened to be in the city to open a grand bazaar in the music hall to raise funds for the sick children's hospital. The park itself had been gifted from Lady Elizabeth Comrie Duthie in memory of her brother Alexander Duthie, an advocate in Aberdeen, and her uncle, Walter. Miss Duthie had been born into a wealthy family of shipowners, shipbuilders and merchants, and when she inherited her brother and uncle's estates, she decided to purchase the Arthur City State in 1880 for £30,000 and handed it over to the Aberdeen authorities. The 47-acre park was completed at a cost of £50,000 and was laid out with three linked lakes, or artificial ponds, with the upper one once being used as a boating pond, grottos, cricket grounds, carriage drives, a terraced garden and walks, all designed by William R. McKelvey of Dundee. A mound was also constructed using the earthen materials excavated during the construction of the linked lakes and once was adorned with a statue of William Wallace. At a later date, the memorial to the Gordon Highlanders who fell in Egypt was also erected in the park, as were several fountains. One of these was erected by the Temperance Party at a cost of £500 to honour the visit of Francis Murphy, who'd started the movement, and was opened that morning by Mrs Esselmont, the wife of the Lord Provost of Aberdeen. The weather that autumnal day was wet, but it didn't deter people attending the opening. Union Street was adorned with bunting, flags and flowers, and the route to the park was dressed with flowers along the way. The Princess had left Balmoral at nine o'clock that morning and arrived in the city by special train along with Lady Southampton and a small entourage. On arrival at Aberdeen train station at midday, she was met by the Lord Provost Peter Esselmont, magistrates, John Hamilton Gordon, the 7th Earl of Aberdeen, the Lord Lieutenant of the County, and the Committee of the Bazaar. A guard of honour was made up of Gordon Highlanders. She attended the fundraiser first, where she purchased goods from every stall. Meanwhile, those invited for the trade's procession to the park gathered in King Street, and at one o'clock, the 4,000-strong line of constables, musicians, members of the Masonic Lodges, members of the Aberdeen Trades Council, members of the Ancient Order of Foresters and Carters, and lorrymen, amongst others, made its way to the park. At three o'clock, the princess, along with local dignitaries, left the town hall where a reception had been held for her, and she arrived at the park at 3.30 to the sound of a fanfare of trumpets marking her arrival. A dais had been erected between two bandstands and a military guard of honour presented arms as the princess made her way to the dais. As she made her way up to the platform, the rain was now pouring down in torrents. Following God Save the Queen, the Hallelujah Chorus sung by the Aberdeen Choral Union and a prayer offered up by Dr Milligan, Miss Duthie presented the keys of the park to the princess. On Miss Duthie's behalf, Alex Murray, the surveyor involved in the park's construction, stated, May it please your Royal Highness, I beg to offer my sincere thanks to your Royal Highness for the honour which you have conferred upon me by being present on this occasion. He went on to say the park would be of enduring public benefit to the citizens of Aberdeen and that he'd acquired the ground for the purpose of forming a public park. 
Two years earlier, on 27th August 1881, the Earl of Aberdeen had ceremonially cut the first turf, and the original oak wheelbarrow used by the Earl and Miss Duthie on that day sits in the temperate house of the Winter Gardens. With the work having been completed, it was now his pleasant duty to hand over the park. He ended by asking the princess to accept this key as a souvenir of this ceremony and declare the park open for the recreation and enjoyment of the community of Aberdeen. The princess then replied, saying that it was a great pleasure to be there on behalf of her mother, the Queen, to declare this beautiful park open, the key of which I now hand to the Lord Provost. She went on to say that Miss Duthie's gift would greatly conduce to the health and enjoyment of her fellow citizens. After handing over one of the keys to the Lord Provost, he accepted the gift of the park on behalf of the town council and the community. Princess Beatrice went on to plant a memorial tree for the occasion. Then Esselmont helped her to her carriage to the sound of rapturous applause and cheering from the assembled crowd. Before leaving, she and her entourage drove round the park, then boarded the royal train at a temporary platform erected near the park, while the crowds began to disperse. The procession was reformed and made its way back to the city centre, and in the evening... Union Street thronged with people as they watched a fireworks display from the Wellington Suspension Bridge, for which Miss Duthie had also contributed a hundred pounds. Miss Duthie died less than two years later on 30th March 1885, aged 67. She was buried in the kirkyard of St Nicholas's Kirk just off Union Street in the family plot. The Hygia statue in Duthie Park, designed by sculptor John Cassidy, representing the goddess of good health, was erected in her honour in 1898. In 1893, the bandstand was erected at a cost of around £400, and another addition to the park came in 1899 with the opening of the Winter Gardens later renamed the David Welsh Winter Gardens, and the erection of greenhouses filled with exotic plants from around the world. Unfortunately, these original houses were damaged during a storm in 1969, but were replaced by the ones we see today. The Winter Gardens houses the second largest collection of bromelads in the UK, and has a wide range of ferns, cacti and banana trees. Railing salvaged from the south side of Union Bridge in 1964, with their distinctive Kelly's Cats, designed by William Kelly, have been placed in the floral courtyard, and a Japanese garden was opened in 1987. A notable memorial in the park is the pink granite MacGregor Obelisk. It commemorates Sir James MacGregor for his services to the British Army's medical department. It originally stood in the quadrangle of Marshall College, but was moved to the park in 1905. A £5 million overhaul of the park took place, with its formal reopening taking place on 30th June, 2013. One of the discoveries during the works was the 1922 Rock Garden, which has been restored to its former glory. The park's cafe was opened in 2017. A memorial to the scientist who helped discover insulin 100 years ago, Nobel Prize winner John James Rickard MacLeod, was unveiled in the park in October 2023. Miss Duthie's legacy lives on as the park is well used by locals and continues to be a draw for families 
couples, dog walkers and those who enjoy spending time at the winter gardens. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.